Welcome back to the Band Guide, where we use GarageBand to create professional sounding music. I'm your Band Guy, Colin, and today is the 14th video in the Ultimate GarageBand Beginner's Guide video series. This series, we're walking through everything to get you started from the first time you open up GarageBand until you're exporting out your final mixed and mastered song. And in fact, if you've been following along with the series, you know we're about to get started working on recording our song, and then we're gonna mix it and master it together in this series. If you haven't already seen the videos before this, definitely go check them out. They're really gonna help you out. And before we even get into today, Today's video where we're going to customize a drum part using GarageBand Drummer to make it really, really fit our song. I want to give you something in addition to this video series. It's called the Ultimate GarageBand Guide. This guide walks through everything from recording, mixing, mastering. It's got shortcuts in it. It's got gear recommendations in it. It's completely free from link in the description below. You can quickly reference back to it anytime you're recording, mixing, mastering, or if you need to buy a new microphone or an interface or anything like that. It's got all the shortcuts in it. It's a really, really powerful tool. Be sure to grab it for free from link in the description below. But let's go and get into today's video where we're customizing a GarageBand drummer part. This is kind of the baseline of our song. Now, if you saw last video, we've already set up this scratch track in our song. And a scratch track is just a quick and dirty recording to have kind of as a guide track as you're recording the rest of your song. The key to a good scratch track is that it's in time with the song and that becomes extremely important now as we go to start add in the GarageBand drummer element of our track. Now, one thing that I haven't shown yet on the series is this arrangement track. It's just a way to arrange your song and it can actually be helpful with the GarageBand drummer. So we'll see that in a second. I'm not going in depth on that in this series, but I have already done a video to that, the link above here, that walks through how to set up your arrangement track. It's a really cool feature in GarageBand. So as you can see, we don't even have a drummer in it yet. Right now we just have a very, very simple vocal recording with an acoustic guitar. <laughs> Nothing to write home about, just something to guide us as we're adding all the elements into our song. And so the first thing we need to do here is create a drummer track, which we can do with this plus button up in the top left corner here. Select drummer, hit create. If you haven't seen my video already on the GarageBand drummer track, you should definitely go check that out. It really walks through all the beginning elements you need to understand about the GarageBand drummer. Now you'll see here that this maybe looked different than the way you've seen a drummer track populate before. And that's because the GarageBand drummer will follow your arrangement track feature to go ahead and populate your entire song based on what it thinks the most natural drum parts for those different sections of your song are gonna be. So it will do something that makes sense for it for the intro and then something for the second intro and then the verse and then the pre-chorus and the chorus and it's going to be a little bit different throughout. Now maybe you'll find that this is exactly what you envisioned but probably not. You probably want a little bit uh, something just a little bit different. So I'm going to show you how to customize this drum part to be perfect for your song. And we're going to customize it in three ways. We're going to customize the part we're gonna customize the fills, which are kind of like the transition, the gotta go to gotta go to gotta go to gotta go to right? I'm a drummer, so I'm gonna do a lot of that this video. Uh, and then we can customize the individual specific notes. So if you just want one extra kick drum here, so it's gonna line up with the rhythm of your acoustic guitar or electric guitar, or if you wanna have a crash cymbal hit right here or at the end of this section, it's not currently doing that. I'm gonna show you how to customize that throughout. So in addition to this GarageBand drummer track, we also need to go ahead and create a software instrument instrument track. And you'll see that in a second, that this is going to be really, really helpful for us. Once you've created the software instrument track, go to drum kit and then just select whichever drum kit you like. If you don't know, then just let's default to the SoCal. And then at the end, we're going to go through and pick out the exact right drum kit for you. So this track is going to be really helpful here in a minute. You'll see that. Let's go ahead and go back to our drummer track here though, and hit E to bring up our editor window. This is where we'll see how we can customize the part itself. So just going from the very beginning of the song, I intend to have maybe a drum fill at the very beginning, but for now I'm going to keep this blank here and just have the song come in right here on this intro. I actually don't hate that drum part right off the bat. That's kind of cool. Let's see what it does right here. So I definitely wanted to pick up in the second section here. So I actually like that first part. It's not maybe what I had originally envisioned, but this is where GarageBand can almost be like a writing tool for us, where it can put you in a different space than what you might have done personally. I'm a drummer personally, but that is still a cool part that kind of catches my ear in a different way than what I would have naturally been inclined towards. So that's pretty cool to me. But this second section, I want to ramp up a little bit. So I want to go to the crash cymbals and get a little bit higher energy. So right now, this transition, it just kind of continues to do more of the same. I want to see what happens if I switch 
down here, just to the symbols, just by clicking on the symbols, it was on the toms. If I click to the symbols, it's gonna to change to the symbols. And I wanna add in the snare drum. So let's listen to that really quick. I don't know if I like the cat 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 rhythm. Let me see what happens if I play around this with this little slider down here for the kick and the snare. That's pretty close to what I'm actually imagining. Just something a little bit more simple and straightforward. Let's listen through this transition here. So the only thing I think I don't like about it is the fill at the end, the dum dum, which I want to customize here in a minute. So what I want to do right now instead is just take this fill slider and just slide it all the way down. And that allows me to just get rid of any fills in this entire section that I have selected here. So now at the end of this. It's actually almost exactly the drum part I'd imagine. <laughs> Let's see what happens at the second section. Okay, cool. Let me see if I take the fills out here and switch it from the cymbals to the hi-hat. So then I'm supposed to have a pause right here. I'm gonna go ahead and delete the drums that are here. And I do want a big fill at the end of this. So what I'm gonna do is go up here. And I'm gonna go right here and I'm gonna shorten this. Or actually, let's just split it. So if you hit Command T, it will split it into two different sections. And then in a minute, I'm gonna use this separate section to play around with different fills until I find one that I like. So let's just focus on this first section here because it kind of has all the main sections of the song. And we've basically broken it out into four sections. We have the intro part that sounds like this. I like that. We have the second intro part that's a little bit built up, right? Then we dive back down into a verse. I don't love that fill at the end of that, so I'm gonna, again, take the fills all the way down to zero on this. Cool, so we have four distinct sections that have all been customized just a little bit to fit more what we want in our song. The next thing that I want you to do is now copy all of that, anything that you are happy with, hit Command C on the keyboard. So we'll select it all here, hit Command C on the keyboard, then go down to your software instrument track that you created, which looks the same, but you'll notice doesn't give us the drummer options down here. And now if I hit Command V on the keyboard to paste it, it's going to paste it in MIDI, which allows me to individually change out notes and customize things if I want to. The other thing that it does is it protects you from GarageBand drummer accidentally changing anything that you might've actually liked here before. So you'll see if I like shorten a section that the drum part will change just a little bit. You see how that part right there changed, right? I don't want to risk that. If I've come up with something that I already like, I wanna lock it in. And so by copying and pasting this down here, I've locked it in. You'll also see that I messed up just a little bit because I copy and paste it one bar over. So we just need to shift this back one bar so it will line up perfectly right there. So now if I listen to this one, and now if I listen to this one, 
exactly the same, right? But now I can actually go in and edit these notes and customize this part, which we'll, you'll see here in just a minute. So that's my workflow. I find a part that I like and then I copy and paste it to a software instrument track. Now let's customize our fills. Fills are huge parts of a drum part. They're the little transition pieces between the different sections. And you want to get those right. And sometimes the ones that it will do on default are awesome, perfect, exactly what you might want. Sometimes they might not be. And so playing around with that and finding different fills can be a really, really powerful way to just slightly improve your track and make it a little bit more of what you envision and what you want and what excites you, right? Well, let's just do one together in this. Let's see if we can get one out of this intro into this verse right here. So you'll hear there right now, it's just no transition, just kind of abrupt. I do want to have a fill there, but I wasn't liking what it was doing. So what I can do is I can select the region, hit Command T to trim it at one bar before the next section. And now I can just play around with just this one bar. And if I just play with this fill knob, it's gonna give us a bunch of different options of different fills and we're gonna see what we like, right? So let's just listen through this one section a few times and play around with this fill knob. I'm gonna loop this section up here so that it will just keep replaying this one section over and over again. Let's go ahead and do it just a little bit longer here. Let's play around with the fills. Not like, not liking that. Not for me. Not for me. Kind of like that, a little bit of a simple fill. So because that's my current favorite, what I'll do is I'll go down to the software instrument track. I'll hit Command T to split this section and I'll delete that. And then I'm gonna take this fill here and hit Command C and go down to the software instrument track and paste that. So now the software instrument track has that same fill transition, right? Okay, so that is the start of this. So I'm digging the way that sounds currently, but let's play around and see if we'd like another fill a little bit more. It only takes a couple little moves, right? I like that if it was only the snare. It's a little bit too much for me though. That was wild, let's listen to that. Nah, too much. <laughs> okay, let's play around just a little bit more. That was crazy. Let's try to make it less complex and see if it gives us one we'd like a little bit more. That was kind of cool. Maybe that's it. Let's try copying and pasting that down because I think I like that better than what was there before. Let's listen to how this sounds on our software instrument track. We'll mute the drummer track. Okay. I think I, that's pretty cool, right? So a little bit different, but I'm digging it. And I'm gonna actually go in and customize the notes, which is the third way that we can customize our part really quickly because I want there to be a crash going into this next section here. So you'll hear right now, it just goes straight to that hi-hat. There's no going into this next section. I just wanna add one. So if you hold command on the keyboard, it will bring up this little pin cursor and you have to be on the software instrument track here, by the way. And now I can find where there's a crash just by scrolling up here. I think I want this crash right here. So I just need to go over to where that note is here, hold the pin and draw one in and then play one with the, with the velocity because that's how hard you hit it. I want this to be a little bit harder than I think it's defaulting to. And let's listen to that. Cool, let's listen to the full transition. Cool. Okay. So that is how you customize your part with GarageBand Drummer. You can really get it to do exactly what you want it to do. And you can go in and write in your own fill. If you have a very specific idea, it takes a little bit of practice and learning the system here, but you can literally go in and change out if I wanted to add more hits here and add a couple toms. 
You know, you can go in and get that specific or just fully write out your individual drum fill, individual parts. And I'm gonna do a little bit of that as I finish out this drum part, which you'll see in the next video. But really quickly, before we move on to the final part of this video, I just wanna show you a quick example of how I might customize this a little bit more, which is to change out the very, very, very end of this fill. I don't really like how it goes into a little roll at the end. If we listen to that one more time here. What I'd rather do is get a I think that's more how I would play it. This is just preference. Remember that this is all just preference. So just do whatever you like, trust your gut. And if you have something in your ear, see if you can create it. And over time, it will make more sense to you. So I've played with this a lot over the years. And so I can get pretty custom on it if I want to. The first thing I wanna do is just add in a second snare hit right here and make it a higher velocity. And then if you go up one more note here, we have a snare rim shot, which is like a harder hit. And so if we listen to that here now, now that's what I have in my head, right? So customize it in ways that make sense to you and that are exciting to you, right? Again, trust your ear, trust your judgment. If this is confusing at first, keep playing around with it because over time you'll be more comfortable with it. But if you never even try it, you'll never be able to do it. So play around with it, see if you can customize it and get it doing kind of what you have in your head. So that's customizing your drum part. We're customizing the main part, we're customizing the fills, and then we're customizing the individual notes to make sure it's doing exactly what we want it to do, which we saw there at the end where I added a crash. I may go in a little bit further in this if I realize, oh, I'm missing a kick drum here that I'd like to have or something like that. I might add that in later, which is one of the advantages of GarageBand Drummer. If you'd recorded a live drummer and realized you want to extra kick drum somewhere, you don't have that opportunity. So that's a really cool flexibility point that you have. Now, the last thing, if you remember two videos ago where we talked about the four stages of a song in the recording process, you'll remember that we have three goals when we're recording. We want to get the right tone, which is the sound of the drum part. And we have not done that yet. We want to get it in time, which GarageBand Drummer will automatically be in time because it's looped into the tempo of your song. So it's going to be perfectly in time. And then we want to get the right take. And we've already gotten the right take by finding the drum part that we want. We have have it in time. So the last thing we need to experiment with is the tone. Let's make sure that we have the right drum sound for us. Now, there's a lot of options here. And if you've never played around with them, if you're on a software instrument, you can just say why to bring up your library over here. And you can listen through all these different sounds. If you haven't already, definitely just go through each one so you have a rough idea of what the different ones sound like. Let's just listen through a few here and see if we have a favorite. Probably not right for the vibe of this song. We want this one to be like a big rocking song. It's kind of cool. That one's kind of cool. Cool, but not for this song. Well, if you're doing like a big rock track, just back here a little bit. None of these are right. You know, the first one we had that SoCal. I like this retro rock too, actually. Let's listen to the intro of this one. Let me put it against that SoCal. I like those toms a lot better, right? Yeah, so I think for me, for this specific song, this SoCal is working best. But take a minute and play around with the different sounds and find what you like best that you think will work best with the style of song that you envision, right? If you're working on a singer-songwriter song, this kind of like brush style sounds really, really good. So that might be the right move for you. Okay, so that's the final thing. So we're gonna customize the part, we're gonna customize the fills, we're gonna customize the notes, and then you're gonna take a second at the end and you're gonna find the right tone for your drum sound. Make sure that you like the sound of the drum kit that you select before you move on to start recording other things so that you can be happy with the tones as you're developing your song, or if you need to backtrack, you'll have a better idea of what's already there and what options you have. Okay, before you go, be sure to grab the Ultimate GarageBand Guide from the link in the description below. It's really gonna help you out. It has everything, recording, mixing, mastering, shortcuts, all that stuff. You can quickly reference back to it anytime you're working on music. It's completely free from link in the description below. So be sure to pick it up. And as always, I'd like to hear from you. Do you have any favorite drummers or drum sounds in GarageBand? Let me know in the comments below. The drummers are a big part of this, by the way. If we go back to our drummer track here, you'll see that you can choose between different drummers. If you haven't already seen my video where I go through the GarageBand drummer, definitely check that out. I'll link to that above here. The GarageBand drummers can really change 
the way that the parts are played. So if you have a favorite drummer, let me know in the comments below or a favorite drum sound, I'd love to hear. If this video is helpful, be sure to like, comment, subscribe, and I'll see you tomorrow where we're adding bass guitar to this track. One, two, three.